What's going on guys? Dan Watson, Learning Cameras, and I've got the DJI Phantom 4 Pro here. And this has been an important one for me because I am a Phantom 3 4K user, and I also have been considering the Mavic and the, the DJI Phantom 4 Pro as an upgrade for me. This has been a great drone for me, but I'm looking at getting into some more automated functions on it, as well as an upgrade in camera quality or portability. So we're gonna take a look at kind of the three of these and see what they have to offer, a lot of the footage, as well as the features and each one of these independently. So check that out. Now I actually rented these two from lumoy.com. If you wanna check that out, there's a link in the description below, but you can uh, use the promo code learningcameras15 and that'll get you 15% off your order when you're there. Now they have like drones, cameras, anything from like 1DXs to Canon T7i. So if you're looking for camera gear, lenses, drones, it's a really cool place, especially for drones because there's not a lot of options on the drone side of things. So let's take a look at these three options and what they have to offer and what might be the best choice for you. of new improvements on this drone but the biggest one is going to be the camera system it's now a 20 megapixel but one inch image sensor so a much larger image sensor on that and that's actually going to be capable of 4k at 60 frames per second now instead of 30 which is a huge addition but most importantly for me you can now control the aperture on the other drones you were dealing with a fixed aperture but now we can adjust it in flight now why this is so important is because i like to kind of match my shutter to my frame rate. I like to double my frame rate with my shutter speed and, and able to control that. The only level of control that you have is the ISO in it. So I put an ND filter on there for when I'm applying a bright light, but my, my exposure is changing drastically as the light changes and there's no way of adjusting this. So with this one, I can vary my aperture in order to keep my shutter exactly where I want and my ISO as low as possible. We do have a new flight mode where you can actually draw your route on the screen and the Phantom 4 is gonna move in that direction and keep your altitude locked. But overall, most of the other intelligent flight modes are gonna be just a little bit better because of the additional sensors. Now, while the Mavic does give you the portability factor, setting it up is really not any faster than setting this up with the propellers. Yes, they fold out, but you have to be a little bit careful with these and not to hit them. And actually, if you do this in the wrong order, like I just did, that's an issue. You have to learn the right order to do this. And so overall, it does go out pretty quickly, but honestly, I mean, these things are so fast putting on and on. So I can twist these on and off in a matter of seconds. This is not a big deal. They're labeled on which ones go to which one. And I didn't find that to be any bigger setup time at all between the two of them. The Mavic Pro also has that smaller joystick with it, which is also good for carrying around and portability. It's really inconvenient to get your phone in here. You have to fold these out. It doesn't work with most cases on here. It can be trouble for some devices. It works, it's just very inconvenient and not as easy as throwing your phone in this one or if you go with the Mavic or with the DJI Phantom 4 Pro Plus, 
that with a built-in nice uh, high knit monitor that's going to be an easier way to go this takes a little bit longer to get that and that kind of saves a lot of the time that you're saving from having these built-in propellers and everything like that that's folding is gonna be lost when you're trying to put your device in this. Now we do have a larger battery on this one. It's a little harder to get in and out, but let me show it to you. This is the larger battery we're dealing with. It's fairly heavy, but it picks it up fine. This is gonna get you about 30 minutes flight time. Now something that we need to keep in mind with drones is that 30 minutes flight time is never going to happen. If you don't land this thing at about 20%, you're gonna be in for some trouble. So really and truly, I say that a 30 minute flight time is gonna be like 20 minutes. So you're gonna want some extra batteries and batteries are a little bit expensive and that's something that's a little bit negative that you're gonna to have to deal with on these drones. Now one thing that's a pain on all of these is gonna be the camera height. The camera as default when it's hanging like this is gonna be in the grass if you're launching this on anything except concrete, including this. And when you go to start up the drone, it actually tries to configure the camera and move this around and most of the time it is obscured by the grass or whatever it's sitting in. On all of these, I wish the legs were just a little bit longer or at least foldable and could come off so they could fit even a little bit smaller profile when you're flying these things. Now, I can't seem to realize why the controller needs to be this big. I do prefer this kind of fold design than this right here and trying to get your phone in, but I seriously think this is a lot bigger than it needs to be, especially when we consider how small and light this is. This is really oversized and I'm not exactly sure why. So it'd be nice to have something a little bit smaller than this one. However, it, the functionality of using this, especially with larger devices like tablets and stuff like that, is really, really cool. Overall, hands down, these are gonna be the three drones on the market that I would consider if you're looking for a drone to purchase. If you're just getting your feet wet on something, this is a great drone. You can get it really inexpensively. I'll put up a link below too. And it flies well. It's great quality with a 4K camera. So it's really getting you the quality of some of your higher end drones, not, not kind of play toys, but if you're looking for good image quality, this is the first one that's gonna get you there. Now it doesn't have some of the features like being able to go uh, several thousand feet with some of the other range extenders and options like that. There's no automation options with sensors detecting obstacles. But if you're looking for a drone that you can fly and it's gonna give you the quality, which is the most important thing for me, and that's why I went with this one, this is gonna be it. Now, the reason I would consider the, the Mavic is gonna be portability and not just portability, but portability specifically for like airline travel or bus travel or something like that where you need to fit it into a small backpack. That's it. If you can fit outside of a backpack, if you don't mind carrying a little case around like this, then I'm gonna recommend you to this one. And here is why. The quality on this is just simply better with 100 megabits per second and being able to control your aperture. That's one of the biggest things for me because if you're flying these drones in the air and the light changes, which it does, you might have an ND filter that you can put on some of these. I'm not even sure if you can get an ND filter on here, but if you can, you can put an ND filter to get your shutter speed right. But as that adjusts as you're flying, there's not a whole lot of options for controlling your shutter speed because you can't control your aperture. That ability on here, hands down, is gonna be a great option for you. Plus you're getting the additional sensors, a little bit longer flight time, a couple other things like that. If you're worried about setting this up really quickly, this is not an issue. I mean, these things pop on and off in a matter of seconds. So I can get this thing from, from in this box to drone flying ready in almost the same amount of time that I can uh, get this one out. And if you really want to speed things up, the real way to do it is the screen. If you get the Phantom 4 Pro Plus with the screen built into it, that really saves you the most amount of time is mounting your phone on there. So overall, this is going to be the drone I would recommend for anybody who cares about the quality and function of their drone. It is hands down a great upgrade. Not only are you getting a better camera, but a lot of functionality differences as well. And again, if you're looking for portability, and I mean portability in a backpack, not just added convenience, this is not that big, guys. Come on, you can pick this up and take it with you most places. However, when I was traveling to California, I needed something I could fit in my carry-on luggage and in a backpack. So ideally, if you could own two, these would be the drones to get. Uh, this one is gonna be replaced by this because the quality on those are gonna be the same and you get the added portability on it and some sensors. So, this really jump starts this, but if you want that quality, this is the one I'm going for. So check out the links below and you can purchase these things. A uh, bunch of other videos coming up, so stay tuned. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks guys for watching. Hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.